A good morning, a good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are tuned in from around the world. Um, today, you're in for a treat. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal training. Um, as I just mentioned, I was going through my final notes and I said, no, this has to be shared um, because I believe it's gonna have real, real impact. So my name, my name is Des Ami, also known as Lord DeFi in the blockchain and crypto space. Um, please free yourself from any distractions. If you've not already grabbed a notepad and a pen, I highly recommend that you do so. Um, my Instagram handle is on your screen as well. There's also a QR code. If you want to scan that, it will be very good to connect. I've had to recently make my profile private um, because of um, you know um, impersonators that are scamming people using my good name and they copy my profile. So I have to you know, um, be one step ahead of them. So that being said, guys, um, I would mention my name is Des Ami, Managing Director of an International Finance Academy, um, Director of NovusBlack.co.uk, which is a private investment club, um, author of um, a bestseller on Amazon, Starting Your Property Side Hustle, a senior finance broker, CMAC qualified, a qualified financial life coach, a former lecturer of financial studies for the London Institute of Banking and Finance, and a former assistant head teacher. I worked in education for over 15 years. Uh, my story is really simple. It was during my time working in education that I lived paycheck to paycheck. I was broke, busted, and disgusted. And um, I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that completely blew me away. I then left teaching and entered the world of entrepreneurship. Um, three industries changed my whole life. The industry of foreign exchange, the crypto blockchain industry, and the home business networking industry um, completely changed my financial situation. Um, I'm now very blessed, um, but I get to travel around the world, um, training and teaching people how to become financially free and showing them practical ways in which to do that. I've just come back from a three month, um, 14 country tour, and it was absolutely phenomenal. We're now planning the next one, and I'm very much looking forward to that. So that being said, guys, today I want to deliver two um, trainings, a very short training on presentation skills, and then a second training on public speaking. I believe that this is a really, really important life skill. Um, it's definitely something that really allowed me to excel in my journey of entrepreneurship. I think it's one of those skills that, you know, if you can hone this, then, you know, you can apply it to so many different industries. So on this call, I'm going through the list. I can see people on this call who are seasoned in entrepreneurship. I can see people at the beginning of their journey. I can actually see people on here from other industries as well, completely from other industries. I actually shared this on my WhatsApp story as well. So I actually see some old school friends on here as well. There's a whole mix of people. So I'm really excited to deliver this training. So first of all, um, and this is gonna apply to um, people who are entrepreneurs, um, in the networking industry, but not necessarily, is just to know that there are four different personality traits or four different personality types um, in the main. Of course, it, you, you should never really put people into boxes, but there are commonalities and similarities across um, the industry. And you'll find the following. You'll find reds, also known as shucks. These are people who are competitive, they're highly driven, and they are motivated by money. Why do we need to know this? It's so that when we're presenting, when we're communicating, when we're, when we're preparing our presentations, we should prepare our presentations knowing that we have to cater to these different personality types. So in my presentation somewhere, I'm going to have to put, you know, how much money that the person can make, you know, are there ranks that they can achieve because these people are, are competitive. So they're going to want to know, you know, I can get to this rank in this time and you know, they're going to want to hear that in the testimonies. Then you've got analytical people, people who, um, so um, red sharks and analytical people, they are greens. They are greens. I can see some greens on this call. I can see my colleague, Susan, is on the call. She's an accountant. And greens tend to be from the, those kind of professions, accountancy, um, you know, tax specialists. They're very curious. They um, all about the numbers and statistics, and they take longer to close they take longer to come on board why because they're doing all their checks they're doing their due diligence it's natural but here's the good thing about greens 
when you get them on board, you've got a member for life. And, and of course, I'm generalizing, but honestly, in my experience, when, 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 you, when you sign up a green or when you're presenting to a green, let's talk more about presenting. When you're presenting to a green, you need to make sure that there are facts and figures in your presentation. You have to cater for them because they're looking for the detail in your presentation. So I'm going to focus more about presenting to greens as opposed to, you know, how to close a green. Um, and then you've got um, yellows. These are nurturers. These are people who love giving back. You know, they love helping others. So I, I, I'm part of a platform where they give huge amounts of money to charity on a, on a monthly basis. I will mention that on the call because that's going to that's gonna appeal to yellows, nurturers. Okay, so again, your presentation has to cater to all of these different personality types. And then you've got the blues, the fun lovers. These are the ones that love to party, they love socializing, they love traveling. So even on this call, I mentioned that um, I've just come back from a world tour and we're going to be planning another one. Blues, their ears are pricked up. They're like, oh, wow, world tour? That sounds like a bit of me, right? I can see people on this call. I can see Maureen on this call that was on the tour of us. Um, she came to the... Um, uh, Ghana, uh, Ghana leg and uh, part of Nigeria as well, if I remember rightly. I can see Shelly on the call who met us in um, in Jamaica and a few others as well. Okay, so again, in your presentation, you may want to talk about the fact that there are international conventions and you get to travel to different countries. So we went to, um, we went to, we had, a, we, we you know, we've had so many conventions. So you'd mention conventions because that's what they want to, that's what they want to hear. So again, this is just so that you know that there are four different personality types. So when you're doing your presentations, when you finish, when you finish preparing your presentation, go back through and ask yourself, have I catered to reds? Have us, have, am I talking about money? Are there facts and figures and details for the greens? And so on and so forth. You get the gist. Um, those of you that are interested in these kind of different personality types, you can take a picture of this slide. I'm not going to go into it now because um, time is pressing, but you can take a picture of this so you can study these people in more detail. I was fascinated by this. Um, you know, and it really helps me when I'm talking to different people, but more poignant and, and pertinent to this call, when I'm presenting in my mind, I'm always thinking, am I catering? to these types of people. Put one in the chat box if that makes sense and if that is um, valuable. Just put a one in the chat box. It is amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, let me move on. So when you're presenting, just some practical things. Um, lots of, lots of um, you have your settings set to only hosts and panelists, which is fine. I still enjoy those ones that are coming through, um, even if it's just to me privately. It's all good. Um, so that being said, guys, when you're on Zoom, just make sure, get familiar with Zoom. If you're going to start presenting, the last thing that you want to do is jump on Zoom and get flustered. Zoom, I've seen Zoom destroy some of the best speakers. Like, it's not because they're not a good speaker, it's because they're not familiar with Zoom. So just get used to Zoom. Maybe just play around with Zoom. Jump on Zoom with a friend. Just play around with your camera settings. Play around with the different buttons. Just be familiar. So when I go in, first thing I do is I mute mics untick where it says that people can untick. I'll make sure that um, it's disabled so people can't write on my screen. I um, disable the waiting room if it's on. There's little things that I've just, I just do so I can move on. When you're starting your call, your presentation, play some um, music or, mo or a motivational video. Okay, I played one um, today. I, I do it all the time. Those of you that are regulars on my call will know that I do that. Why? It just helps to set the mood. I like motivational videos because they're uplifted. Sometimes I get so caught up in the motivational video that I even forget that I'm doing a presentation. I'm like, oh my God. Like we had one, me and Susan had one the other day. There was like 400 people on the call. And I was so into, I think it was, who was it? I think it was Eric, Eric Thomas. And I got so into it. I was like, oh my God, I've got 400 people waiting for us to speak. So that being said, guys, um, or you can play music. You know, sometimes I just want to lift everyone up and I'll just play some music and so forth um, and just keep, um, check that, if, so at the beginning, check that everyone can see you and hear you. So normally I will say, I'm quite proficient with Zoom now, so I kind of know um, if I see the green, you know, the mic 
it, it turns green when you're talking. So I kind of know that people can hear me, but it's always good to test it. So you can just say, hey, hey guys, um, you know, just put a one in the chat box if you can hear me and see me okay, then you know. There's nothing worse than launching into a Zoom. Imagine if the chat box is off as well and no one can hear you or see you. I've seen people do that. I've had to call them on their mobile to say, look, we can't, we can't hear you right now. And we can't even tell, or maybe we're telling them in the chat box, but they don't even know. They're not even focused on the chat box because it's the chat box is somewhere else. Um, it's always good to open the call with some icebreakers. I didn't do that today, so I'm going to slap my own wrists. So I normally do. Those of you that are regulars on my call, I normally say, you know, hey, guys, how you doing? Good morning, good afternoon, and a good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Um, guys, where are you around in the world? Did you see how I connected that? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Guys, why don't you let me know? Where exactly are you? In the world. In fact, guys, why, you, why don't you let me know right now? Why, where are you tuned in from right now, guys? Let me know in the chat box. Where are you tuned in from right now around the world? Um, let, 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 let the people see in the chat box, guys, where are you located? Um, just another reminder, some of you are messaging to me directly. Um, I think your settings are set to host and panelists. And that's absolutely fine. Um, if you did want to change it, great. If you just want to keep sending them to me privately, I can see like hundreds coming through to me privately. And that's absolutely fine. No problem at all. Um, so do your icebreakers. Another good icebreaker is this one. This is one of my favorite ones. Guys, it's always good to be grateful. So, you know, why don't we practice gratitude right now? Put something, and I, I'm actually telling you, to, I'm actually giving you an instruction as well. So why don't you put in the chat box something that you are happy and grateful for today? I, I like to start calls like that because it gives me an opportunity to be grateful. It gives the audience an opportunity to be grateful. And guess what? It's a great icebreaker, right? It's a really good one. So I can see Natasha's grateful for her dad. Um, Irene from Boston, uh, Massachusetts. Um, Boofy is grateful for uh, the, her team. Um, uh, Annie says she's grateful for um, Happy Nation. Um, and so on and so forth. So for my family, happy and grateful for this call. Do you get the gist? So it's a nice icebreaker. Always start with an icebreaker. You know, when I'm doing a when I'm doing a when I'm doing a live presentation, who can put in the chat box? What's my favorite icebreaker when I'm on stage? First person to get it right. What's my favorite icebreaker that when I'm on stage? I was on stage on Friday in Wembley. And I did it there. So some of you should remember. So I'll, I'll put out your misery. I normally do the, the massage. I normally get oh that I did. I said that and I actually didn't do it. I had it in my mind to do it and I actually forgot to do it. So <laughs> I never did it. No, I didn't do it. I do normally do it. I, normally, I did it on tour, but I actually didn't do it on Friday. I thought, in my mind, I thought I did it. <laughs> but anyway, that's, a, that's something for another day. So actually, I will talk about that one, actually, because it's a good one for... Because you don't always do presentations on, on, on Zoom. Some of you are going to do presentations on stage. And I know your heart's beating right now at the thought of that, but don't worry, we're going to tackle that later. So when you're on stage, one of the icebreakers I like to do is I normally get people... I, I normally say, guys, everyone stand to your feet. You know, I want you to stretch your arms out in front of you. So stand to your feet, turn to your left. People are now looking at that because people don't know the left and right. Then you guide them this way. Put your arms, stretch them out in front, put them on the shoulders of the person in front of you. And they're looking at you like, where are you going with this? Like, what's going on? And then I say, look, just give the person in front of you a nice massage. And then everyone starts laughing, right? It's nice. Everyone's laughing. Who, who's been on one of my live calls and seen this uh, live presentation? Put one in the chat box if you see me do this live. Everyone's laughing. And then after about 30 seconds, get them to switch over, you know. Um, and that's normally a nice um, icebreaker. Um, and, you know, you can go into the audience and say, like, you know, oh, you know, you look like you're enjoying that. You can, you can play around with that. Be careful with that one. Because, you know, I've been in all Muslim countries, Muslim audience, and tried to do that one. And it went down like a lead balloon. And that, that comes down to knowing your audience, right? To knowing your audience. Um, okay, Ellen remembers me doing that one in, in Ghana. Um, another good one is, you know, turn to the person to your left and say something. So I normally say, turn to the person to your left and say, nothing changes if nothing changes. And they say it to each other. And then, you know, I play around with that. Okay. So guys, on your presentations, always have testimonies if you are if it's a presentation where you are presenting the products for your platform whatever your platform is there are people here from different platforms whatever your platform is um you know if you are presenting that product or service get testimonies 
Get some testimonies. One or two testimonies. They're very powerful because they provide social proof. It doesn't have to be long. It could be one minute long, two minutes long max. Edify the person giving the testimony. So say something about them. Highlight three things about them. Maybe something um, about their character, something about their progress on the platform. You know, three things about them. Ask them to give a brief. Um, you can prepare them. Tell them to talk about their background. What made them join the platform? What have they achieved so far? Or how is it going so far? And what are they looking forward to in the future? And that's it for my um, presentation skills. And now I want to move on to um, public speaking. So if you got value from that segment, just put a one in the comment box, whether it's to everyone or to um, hosts and panelists. That's just some presentation skills tips. But the, the main part of this is going to be public speaking. I really want to talk about public speaking, which is obviously part of presentation skills. It's, it's all linked together. It's all linked together. Wow, incredible numbers on this Zoom. So public speaking. I want you to know that this is a journey. I, I used to be petrified of public speaking. Petrified. You know, my heart would start racing. I remember I used to go to presentations. Of, and this is after being a teacher for 15 years, an assistant head, you know, commanding audiences at work. But then when it came to this industry of, of um, networking, I don't know, it's like, it's like a different animal. I don't know why. Even doing my first Zoom, I was petrified. So I want you to know that it's normal. It's normal. Do you know that public speaking is the number one fear of, of most people? Second is dying. So people are more scared of public speaking than they are of dying. <laughs> it, you don't find that crazy. I find that crazy. So this is a journey. It's a journey. So what I didn't know back then, but I know now, is that I had something within me. I developed something that is so powerful. And what I'm about to explain to you now is the most powerful thing, and it's the most powerful weapon that you can have, and it's much better than any skill. It's my secret weapon. It was always my secret weapon when I was a school teacher um, and I was coaching students. I tapped into something very, very powerful, and I hope that you can too. It's called the growth mindset. I want you to know that your ability to grow far outweighs any innate abilities so some of you in this corner you're probably thinking well i'm not a great public speaker you don't have to be you don't have to be. you just have to have a growth mindset that's it you know i'm i'm you know still, i'm still developing as a public speaker but having a growth mindset knowing that i have this ability to grow knowing that i can learn to do anything as opposed to a fixed mindset that says I'm either good at something or I'm not. That's what a fixed mindset says. A fixed mindset is, oh, I'm good at this or I'm, or I'm bad at that. The amount of students I've had that would say, sir, I'm not good at maths. And that's it. You know, a student can just tell themselves, I'm not good at maths. And literally that would stay with them for life. I still get adults now that would say, oh, you know, I'm just not a numbers guy. I'm not just a numbers. And it's because they've told themselves this, it's become a self-fulfilling prophecy so growth mindset in a growth mindset people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work brains and talent are just the starting point absolutely just the starting point resilience is essential for great accomplishment in other words you're not giving up guys my first zoom was horrible i promise you now you would not even i wish i'd recorded it so you could see it was my the first time i was on stage was awful but i knew it was going to be awful and it was fine because i knew it'd get better and i you know i knew that i'd develop and i would grow so if you want to look more into growth mindset um the lady who's really kind of leading this research is um called carol dweck carol dweck so um, I remember I had a year group, when I was ahead of year, I had a year group that had the lowest 
SATS results in the whole local authority. So when they came into year seven, their year six SATS results were awful, the worst in the borough. And I was handed this year group in year seven and I was told because of my reputation that I had to, you know, that my, part of the, I was headhunted for the school and I was asked to work a miracle and somehow get, get them to get good, good GCSEs. And this is what I discovered. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do, to be honest, because I looked at their results and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> what you're asking me to do and, and, and this? So that's when I started to tap into growth mindset. And I realized that if I could get this year group to believe in growth mindset and get them to believe that they could um, improve through practice and being resilient, um, that we had a chance. And lo and behold, cut a long story short, that year group, George Green's year group of 2016, to this day, I have it on record that to this day, they have the best results that the school have ever seen. Um, not sure if anyone is called from that school that could verify. It's, it was phenomenal. And it's because it's nothing to do with me. It was more to do with this growth mindset philosophy. You know, when you think of um, sports people like David Beckham, David Beckham um, reportedly actually wasn't blessed with skill. David Beckham became such a great footballer because of his um, ability to develop and practice. When David Beckham went to Manchester United, there was another football player there called Ravel Morrison, who was said to be better than David Beckham, skill-wise. Some of you, or maybe most of you, have probably never heard of this guy, Ravel Morrison. And that's because as much as he had the skill, he didn't have the work ethic that David Beckham had. And therefore, his career is more or less non-existent. So guys, where are you on this scale of fear of public speaking? On a scale of one to 10, 10 that you are completely petrified, five, not so bad. Um, uh, so not so bad, once I get started, I'm okay. And 10, like you're super confident. Where would you say you are on that scale right now? Um, lots coming through privately, and that's okay. <laughs> Someone's put a Heidi Bear face. Okay. Brilliant. It's important to kind of know your starting point. It's important to kind of know your starting point. Amazing. Keep them through. Keep them through. See Mr. Bless on the call. Absolutely fantastic. So, and he said 0.1. Well, that's why we're here, right? You're taking action. That's why we're here. One of the things that I did when I was younger, because I was actually, um, I was actually, I was actually, uh, I'm very, I'm very introverted. I'm, a, I'm an introverted um, individual, um, you know, very, very shy by nature. Some of you are probably like, what's his thinking now? He's, he's lying, he's making it up. No, he's, I've had to develop into this character. But, you know, back in the day, I was very shy, retiring. And one of the things that I did when I was at secondary school, because I kind of knew that whatever career I was going to go into, I, I couldn't be shy, right? So one of the things I did was I, I, um, I got into drama. You know, and, and I got, and I became, um, I became an actor. I became a thespian. You know, I became, I, you know, and I started to get more stage time, and that really helped with my confidence. Um, okay. So, how do you feel when you're asked to speak in public, or asked to, um, or asked to speak or do a presentation? Type some responses in the chat box. How do you feel? How would you describe that feeling? Some of you have messaged me privately that you don't believe that I'm, I'm an introvert. My, my whole family are extroverts. I, I mean, I, I, I live with extroverts. I'm the only introvert. <laughs> Nervous, lump in the throat, frozen, blank, nervous, anxious. Yeah. And, and these are words that I hear a lot. You know, some people get sweaty palms. I used to get dry mouth. That was one of the things. Like whenever I had to do like a staff inset. So doing presentation, do, like teaching kids is one thing. People think, oh, but you teach kids. Yeah, teaching, like kids don't know nothing. You can, that's fine. When you have to do like a staff inset in front of your peers, that's when I'd get dry mouth. That was dry mouth. I'm okay as long as I know my stuff. Okay. So Margaret's touched on something that I'm going to touch on. I'm excited and grateful for the opportunity. So, Mr. Bless, you are onto something there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on that as well. My first Facebook Live ever um, was being interviewed by a multi-billionaire. 
was being interviewed by a multi-billionaire. Uh, so you were being inter interviewed by a multi-billionaire and an industry legend, Larry Thompson, in at the deep end. Wow, sink or swim. <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal. So I, I really wanted you to do that exercise so that you can see, although lots of those come through privately, you can see that we're all in the same boat. Everyone's feeling the same thing. Some of, the, some of your favorite speakers, maybe even Larry Thompson, you know, most speakers, whether they're seasoned, you know, Grant Cardone, you know, he says this all the time that he still gets nervous when he goes on stage. Most people, they get nervous. It disappears. Once you get going, who, who agrees with me? Put a free in the chat box if you agree with that statement that the nerves are there. Like, I get it. I still get it. You know, Friday, I spoke on stage. Just before I went up, kicked in. But because I know, you know, I've just done a world tour. I've been speaking all around the world. And I know that I always get it. And then it goes. Once I get into it, once I've done my icebreaker, the icebreakers for me, as much as it's for, as for the audience, I can, can you see all the freeze coming through now? So, so once you get into it, so that helps me straight away. Because I know when I feel that, when I get that little feeling in the stomach, I say to myself, Dave, come on, you always get that feeling. And, you, and then you, by your second slide, you're fine. So already I'm getting comfort. So take solace from that. Okay. So how do we overcome the fear? How do we overcome this fear? Because we, it may come, but we have to have strategies. So one thing I'm recommending not to do is don't, um, so one of the, you know, there's an old wives tale to imagine the audience naked. Put a two in the chat box if you've heard this before. Imagine the audience naked. Don't do that, guys. That doesn't help. I, I mean, that's like the worst piece of advice. I mean, who, wants to, who wants to imagine, you know, people naked? That, that's, that's just going to put you off. So don't do that. Okay, that's, that's one thing I would say. Just don't do that. Okay, so overcoming the fear. First thing, do the thing that you're scared of and then get the courage. So here's what I used to do. When I used to go to presentations and the, the leaders would say, you know, um, well, can anyone give a testimony? I'm scared, but I'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll do one. And I'll just figure it out later. So um, um, Susan Jeffers said this. Susan Jeffers said, feel the fear and do it anyway. Somebody write that in the chat box. Feel the fear and then do it anyway. So just, so just put yourself forward. If, if you ever hear, if I'm ever on a Zoom and I'm like, guys, um, you know, I need some testimonies. Just volunteer. Just volunteer. And then, and then just, you figure it out. But I'm going to give you some more tips to put some meat on the bone so you're not just figuring it out. Okay, just do it. It's not that bad. So what that used to do to me, it just used to throw me in the deep end. I'd volunteer. I'd volunteer for stuff. And, you know, I, I really don't want to do it, but I know that I've got to come out my comfort zone. I want you to write this down. Your comfort zone is your broke zone. I know that in order for me to grow and develop, I have to do things that make me uncomfortable. And there are still things that I, 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 you know, that will make me uncomfortable and that will make me a bit nervous. But I want to grow. Who here wants to grow? Put a four in the chat box if you want to grow. Because maybe you don't want to grow. But we should, we're, we're all here because we want to grow. That's you, you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have attended this training. You wouldn't have attended this training. So I believe everyone here wants to grow. Know who you are at your core. Like, know who you are. Are you a nice person? Are you a decent person? Once you know who you are at your core, you can't be affected by people. And, and, and whether they disagree with you or don't like you. I go on stage and I'm not really, you know, I'm not fussed about, I used to be so caught up about what if they don't like me or what if they don't like what I've got to say. Guess what? Some people are just not going to like you regardless. Like they've already made up their mind. So just know who you are at your core. Know who you are at your core. And I think this is what um, Mr. Bless was alluding to. If you can master this, I promise you, you're about to go clear. You're about to go clear. This is really powerful. You see, I turn fear into excitement. And I'm going to show you how. If you can turn fear into excitement, you've unlocked a secret door. You see, why are you scared? Just think of it like a roller coaster. Roller coaster, you're, you're scared and excited all at the same time. 
and then your fear turns into excitement. So whatever it is, so, you know, going on stage on Friday, I'm excited. I'm excited because for many different reasons, one, I'm getting exposure, exposure to a new audience. You know, I'm getting to see friendly faces in, in, the, in the audience. You know, I want you to write this down. It's, it's an old saying in the industry of networking. The one with the clicker gets paid quicker. Now, in essence, what he's trying to say is people who master public speaking and presenting, they tend to be the top earners in the industry of networking, entrepreneurship. Just put a one in the chat box if you agree with that. If you really think about all of the top earners in your industry, are they not presenting? Are they not public speaking? Of course they are. We know this. So that's what makes me excited. In the, and so in the early days when I was scared, I turned it into excitement because I'm like, I'm now doing the thing that all the top earners are doing. I'm now presenting. I'm now showing the plan. So I wasn't showing the plan. Michael used to show the plan. And I'll just get people on his call. And then someone said, hold on. The top earners all present. All of the top earners in the, in the industry, they know how to present. So why am I not presenting? The penny dropped. And I said, well, I'm going to have to learn. How to I'm going to have to come out of my comfort zone. And then I started to get excited that I'm going to be a top earner because I'm doing the thing that top earners are doing. Stage time equals wealth time. Now you can deliver your message to more than one person. You're leveraging yourself. You see, once you master Zoom, once you master delivering a presentation, guess what? You're still doing the same presentation, but more people are on the call. Because once you get better, guess what? Now your team have confidence in you because they see that now you're doing a presentation. You're not relying on Des Ame. You're not relying on Michael. You're not relying on this one or that one. You're not relying on, on um, um, Philip. You're not re you're, you, are, you are the presenter. Your team, watch your team have more confidence. When you start presenting, your team will prospect harder because they have a personal relationship with you. So now, because you're presenting, they feel more confident getting prospects onto your Zoom because they know that they can leverage you more. And they can say, oh, um, the person presenting, that's my mentor. I can get you on a, I can get you on a freeway call with them. There's a certain confidence that transmits throughout your whole team. It permeates through your whole team. And now your presentations, more people are being chucked onto your presentation. Stage time equals wealth time. When I'm on stage, I know that indirectly, that's increasing my wealth, increasing my exposure. If you master the skill of public speaking, I promise you, your earning ability will go up. You will soon become a paid speaker. People will pay you to speak. I'm often asked to, you know, I'm often, I'm often um, you know, offered paid speaking gigs. You know, I was, I was at the Houses of Commons recently for a gig. Right. But this didn't happen overnight. I didn't just wake up and become a speaker. When I say speaker at the House of Commons, I don't mean, you know, like the speakers, speakers at House of Commons, but you know what I mean? It's, this is development. We're developing. This is growth, having a growth mindset. Remember that you're not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Everyone feels the same nerves. We just saw that in the group. Everybody feels the same nerves when they have to speak or present. So take comfort from the fact that you are not alone. You can take comfort from that. All of the big speakers get nervous. Every single one of them. And that alone should give you comfort. It's not because you're thinking it's just you. Why am I being so silly? Why do I just get nervous? No, everyone does. So take comfort from that. That should reassure you that this is completely natural. But here's where your confidence comes from knowing your stuff. I think somebody mentioned it earlier. I promise you, when you know your stuff, you become more confident. Put a one in the chat box if you agree with this statement.
Amazing. Know your stuff, guys. This is probably one of the biggest nuggets I'm going to give you today. It's so simple, but I promise you, it's a, it's a powerful one. When you know your stuff, so if you're delivering a presentation, and one of the easiest presentations to deliver is your company presentation. So whatever platform you're on, if they have a presentation, get hold of it and start practicing. Get hold of it and start practicing. Guess who you can practice to? You, one, of my, one of my favorite um, networkers, his name is um, Austin Godsley. His first presentation he did was to his kids' toys. Why? Well, he invited loads of people to a home presentation and nobody turned up. So he could have just said, oh, well, you know what? No one's turned up. Let's call it a day. He said, no, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So he got all of his kids' toys. He did the presentation. You know, at the end of it, he signed up um, Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear signed up to the platform. Right? But you can just practice with your partner. Get your partner's feedback. You can practice by yourself. You can just record yourself on Zoom and watch it back. Just practice. It's, it's one of the oldest um, adages in the world. Practice makes perfect. Practice breeds confidence. It breeds confidence. Because now you're like, well, I know this. I know my, I know my stuff. I know what I'm going to say. So practice the hell out of your presentation. You're going to know your presentation back to front. And it will give you confidence. That's what makes most people know. What makes me nervous when I'm unprepared? So if I go to a presentation and then somebody says, oh, can you, tell, can you talk to us about... Um, so there was, a time I, there was a time I did a big, massive... I was asked to... Was, was it a speaking? Was it a paid gig? I had to do a big, massive... Um, uh, was it Channel 4? I it, was a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a it was a mainstream um, network in the UK. And it was a last minute thing I was asked by one of my um, business mentors to do it. And it was on a topic. It was, it was during, um, it was during um, that Black Lives Matter, right in the middle of Black Lives Matter. And of course I know my stuff, but some of the commentators that they had on there were like, they really knew their stuff, right? So it was a last minute thing. And I would have loved to have had a bit more time, you know, to just get some statistics, to just be a little bit more like hands on, like fingers on the pulse, like some more up-to-date stuff. And it was, I was proper thrown in the last minute. Like I did okay, but what made me nervous was just not being prepared. If I had a bit more time, I would have been a bit more prepared. So you have to know our stuff. So record yourself and play it back. You can play it back and, and, and look at your body language. Do you look boring? Do you look nervous? And then you can fix it and get opinions. Show your partner. You know, it will lower your anxiety. One of the things that, one of the early things that I did when I got into networking was um, my story. Learn your story. Master your story. Master telling your story. Three minutes. What's your story? What's your background? So this is, here's some tips for your story. Write this down. Your background. Pain of your background. What you did to overcome that how you joined your platform and how, how is it going? And maybe why you're looking forward to the future. So background, my background is I was, I was a broke secondary school teacher. Pain of my background, obviously being broke, living paycheck to paycheck, not having enough money to, you know, put food on the table, um, you know, having um, messages from the bank and stuff like that. That was a pain of my background. And then I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's us. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, blah, 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 blah. Most of you know my story now. Then I came to find a, a, a trading platform. That was the first platform that I had. And then I got introduced to networking, changed my whole life. Now I speak around the world. Da, 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 da. Why am I excited for the future? Okay. Learn that. So one of the first things I did is I recorded my story on my phone. Three minutes. Then on my way to work, I was still a school teacher. On my way to work, on my headphones, I'd listen to my story over and over and over again. What do you think I did? Familiarity. So when I was asked to give a testimony, when I was asked to speak on stage, my story was so second nature. Like, you guys have heard my story so many times that you probably, um, you know, you probably could tell my own story. Here's a top tip. Guess what? When you're presenting, if you forget something, your audience doesn't know. The audience won't know. Sometimes we get so hung up over, what if I forget this? What? Don't worry about it. 
I do it all the time. I, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. I come off stage and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I should have said that. Why did I say that? So do you guys, you guys probably um, on um, on Friday, I did, I did the present, I did my presentation, and you know, I got you know, very, very well received. I got great feedback and everything. And then the host, amazing guy, um, I was talking about edification, but it, that wasn't the main part of the presentation. So I only touched on edification. I didn't go into detail. But then when the host came back on, you probably remember that the host then said, oh, there's a, there's a triangle and there's a reason why we edify, blah, blah. So I was like, oh man, should I have said that? You know, because I know that, because I present that. It's in, my, it's in my other presentations, but I, don't, I didn't say it then. So I'm constantly reflecting and reviewing. But guess what? Had he had not said that, nobody would have known that there was a triangle. I'm glad that he did say it because it's an important thing. But edification wasn't a big part of my presentation, so I just touched on it. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that people won't know. People just won't know. So conquer the fear. The good news is you'll start off nervous, but that will soon disappear as you get into your presentation. It's not the nerves that separate us. It's the, it's the people that step up. People that step up. Many are called, few, few are chosen. Step up, feel the fear and do it anyway. Exposure creates familiarity. Here's another top tip, guys. Focus on the audience, not yourself. Focus on the audience. So all your fears are about you. You, 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 you. Focus on the audience. And that keeps the focus external. So when I'm talking, I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about the audience. Are the audience getting value? Are the audience enjoying it? So in terms of rituals, so I know some speakers like to have rituals. Um, they like to have some me time just before speaking. So if you're about to go on stage, maybe have some quiet time. If you're religious, you can maybe pray. I know some people like um, will have like a little prayer team, for example. You can by all means do that. Um, this is one I learned on a, on a course, you know, visualize a big bright white light coming in from the sky, going through your head, going through your whole body. The light will get brighter and brighter until eventually it fills the whole room. This is a way to just get into the right state, to just clear your mind. Focus on ensuring everyone walks away with some kind of value from your presentation. Just before you go on stage, you may need to get up, you know, jump around. Some people shadow box, open their arms, deep breaths, you know, just get your energy up. You know, you hear, you see some people beat their chest. It's just a way to lift themselves. When you go on stage, there's nothing worse than somebody, you know, who's very flat. If you have big energy, it's infectious and it will transmit onto the audience. So you might want to have like a power move to change your state. You know, I do, let's go. You know, I'll be like, let's go. You know, wow, 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 come on stage. Wow, 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 wow. Let's go. I'm, I'm changing my state. I'm getting my energy up. You know, you can have your own thing as well. So I'm going to end. If you're still getting value so far, just put us an 888 in the chat box. And I'm going to end with seven principles for a killer presentation and a killer speech. <clears throat> Okay, amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, so here we go. Number one, connect with your audience. Connect with your audience. Know and understand your audience prior to the presentation. You know, are there cultural differences? You know, I learned that the hard way on tour. You know, I just told you when I, I was doing the you know, the, hand, the massage thing, then we got to um, Tanzania and then it was like predominantly Muslim. I didn't, I didn't re realize it was predominantly Muslim. I don't know if it's a Muslim country, but maybe the part of Dar es Salaam we were at was like mainly Muslim. Cause when I said to do the, the, um, the massage thing, like literally death stairs, death stairs, right? So that was like, I could, I should really like uh, research my audience a bit more on that one, you know? What are their influences based on? So I, what, what are their influences based on? Is it based on geography? Is it based on religion? How do they dress? What is their sense of humor like? This will help you to understand your audience more. So you really need to connect with your audience by just doing your research. 
know that there are different members of your audience. Going back to the, you know, we talk, spoke about the seven um, colors of um, uh, networkers, different um, members of the community. So just knowing that in the audience, you're going to have jokers. And this can be good or bad. Jokers can be good or bad. They can work for you. They can go against you. You're going to have cynics, cynic, cynical people. So if you're doing a presentation on networking, I'm sorry, on, um, on some sort of um, money-making opportunity, you're going to have people in the audience that think it's a scam. If it's networking, people that, oh, not networking, it's that pyramid stuff. Oh, my gosh. Da, da, da. You're going to have cynics. They could turn into hecklers. However, you can, you can convert cynics. If you're skilled, you can convert skinnets, cynics and they will become good allies. Know the leaders. You can normally tell the leaders in the audience. And these are the ones that they all look to before making up their mind. Then, of course, you've got the sheep. You've got the haters. You know, 10% are not going to like you. It's okay. I find it quite comforting. Yeah, 10%, no problem. It's not personal. It's how it is. And remember, I, I mentioned that before, you're going to have people that like details and facts. So make sure in your presentation, you've got details and you've got facts. You've got people that want to be entertained. You've got people that want to feel like they're part of a community. They just want to be loved. Eye contact is really good for connecting with your audience. Okay. And don't just focus on the ones who are smiling and giving you eye contact. As much as that's great, by the way, when you're presenting, and you've got people nodding and smiling. That's amazing. I love those people, right? But you want to give attention to everyone. So try and connect with those people that don't look engaged. That's how you bring them in. If you notice when I'm presenting, I'm like a gazelle. I like to, you know, I like to, I like to own the stage. So I will walk to different parts of the stage. I will connect. If there's upper balcony, I'll connect them with them. I connect with people at the back. If there's an aisle, I like to walk up and down the aisle. I like to connect with the audience. Be aware of the people. Don't, I've seen people spend too much time with certain section of, sections of the room and they just neglect a whole section. Sometimes I've seen the speaker just connect with one person. That's horrible. I don't, I don't know if anyone's ever noticed that before. Put a seven if you, if you know what I'm talking about, where like it, there, there just seems to be this person in the room and they're just so fixated on that person. Maybe like they're like the leader or they're like the, you know, the alpha or they're like the, the big person in the room and they're just they're literally just talking to that person it's like one of the worst things i see use analog um, analogies to connect with you i use analogies all the time i use analogies all the time um so for example um one of my favorite ones is you know being being broke is like swimming in the ocean with no life jacket and no rescue boat that's what being broke's like use analogies People don't mind if you mess up. Don't worry about it, okay? Connect with your audience. The audience, is fun. this is actually a really interesting fact. Do you know that audience, audiences don't actually like flawless speakers? They, they do and they don't. They like flawless speakers, but when you are, when you're like, when you have like a little flaw, like the audience warm to you a little bit. It's like you're human. They're like, oh, you're, you're human. It's fine. And don't agree with me. Put a nine if you agree with that. Okay, I'm not talking about messing up on purpose. I'm just saying that if you have a little mess up, it's fine. That sometimes it, the, the audience connects with you even more, you know, because they just, they don't, because you're not a machine. You're not a machine, you're, you're human. They, they can warm to you. So great ways to captivate an audience. Ask questions. How many of you have a mobile phone? Stick your hand in the air, you know? I'm, I interact with you all the time. I've been asking you to put a one in the chat box for different things. I'm um, audience interaction. So if you're on Zoom, you can use that method. Put a one in the chat box if you can relate to the feeling of living paycheck to paycheck. It helps to, to be able to laugh at yourself too when you mess up. Absolutely. Okay, some people actually put a one in the chat box. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what I mean is like, you know, that's a good question. I'm just giving you examples of how to ask questions. Show of hands. How many, show of hands. How many of you that's how you connect with the audience. Ask questions. Use humor where you can. Okay. It's always good to have your audience laughing. I'm always trying to crack jokes, you know, even if they're not funny. Energy. Go on stage with energy. 
So number two of, of the seven tips, start the way you mean to go on. Your state will be infectious. Lead with your energy. Match the mood of the room. Sometimes you just have to let your energy build up. If the room, you have to match the room because I, there are some rooms you can't go in Mr. Energetic or Mrs. Energetic because it doesn't match the room. You know, I know you have to build them up, but you have to kind of look at the room and gauge it as well. I've seen some people go on ah, right at the beginning and it's like, it's just too much too soon, you know? And you have to kind of read the room and let it kind of build up because, you know, it again, you'll get skilled at this. There are times when you can just go in and miss the high energy from the outset, um, but read the room. You know, if you're going into a room full of accountants and that they're all in the mid sixties and you're going in like a rock star, you know, again, audience, knowing your audience. Three, have a killer start. Kill your presentation from the off. Research suggests that the average attention span is just five minutes. So capture the audience in the first minute. In the first minute, you've got that first minute to really make your mark. A great opener will intrigue and prepare your audience. So four killer ways to hook your audience in 60 seconds. Hooking your audience. Number one, arouse curiosity. Arouse curiosity. So there's different ways you can do this. You could say something like, can I let you into a secret? Can I let you into a secret? They're curious. You know, I've seen some stage, some speakers walk on stage. I've seen some um, TED Talk speakers do this. You know, they'll come on stage with like some sort of mis some sort of mystery box. Um, like so, they'll they'll have like a um, like a briefcase or something, and they'll just leave it there. And it's like, well, you know, so you, your audience is like, what's that? What what is that? And they they don't they come to it later in the presentation. You could ask questions. You can trigger imagination. Um, start with a story or an anecdote. This is, a, this is a really popular one. You know, you start off with a story, maybe your story or a story. Speech patterns, know what you're talking about. Know your stuff, know what you're talking about. Um, don't do any of the below. Um, I think, I believe, I guess, those kind of statements suggest that you don't know what you're talking about. A lot of people, it's a bad habit. A lot of people end sentence, sentences with, you know, I was, you know, I was at the mall the other day, you know, you know, you know, it's a habit. Sometimes I might, I may do it, but try not to. That's the, that's the point that's being made. It's not very professional unless you're in a setting where, you know, you know, that is okay. <laughs> you know, um's at the end. Come on. Who, who, who put one in the chat box? If, if you're, if you are victim to the um's, you know, it's a tough one. The um's are hard. Very, very, very hard. Sometimes you're doing it to get thinking time. Um, um, but try and do this rather than say, um, try and just pause. I, 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 I had to learn to just pause rather than say, um, pausing can help to gather your thoughts. Um, if you get a question, pause and just digest the question. That's what I do. I'll probably take longer than most to respond because I don't mind pausing to digest the question. Have a bridge or, or connection points between parts of your talk. You know, so you're talking about something, talking about animals, you're talking about a dog, and you're like, talking about animals? Let me tell you about the four different animal types in, um, in the industry. You know, little connection, connecting points. Five, movement, very important. Regularly change your state. Try not to just stay in one place at the same time. So when you change your state, you will change the audience's state. So sometimes I'm talking, I'm walking around, and then I'll find... So sometimes I'll have a stool strategically placed on the stage. So as I'm walking and I'm talking and I'm gesturing, then I will just go and sit down calmly on the stool. I've changed my state. And now the audience, I can feel their state changing. And then I'll get up again and I'll walk about. I'll change my state. If I'm, if I'm doing a q and I may go and sit down at a desk. You can't keep pacing frantically. You can move, but just stop and talk, connect with the audience, and then move to a new spot. I've seen people just pace up and down. Maybe that's just nerves. Just be controlled with, with the walking. Yes, move around, but let it be controlled. So you're walking, you stop, you're connecting with a particular part of the audience. Then you've moved 
to a different direction. Now you're communicating with a different part. Yeah, I've already mentioned about sitting on a stool. Um, using open palm gestures is a really good way to connect as well. Stories, I mentioned them earlier. Use stories to entertain or to say something good about yourself or about the product or about the company. You can big up yourself in a story. You know, so listen, I was, I was reading the Guardian newspaper the other day and I discovered that to people, like, oh, wow, you read the Guardian. Sounds intelligent, right? Tell a story. We don't connect with statistics. We don't connect with statistics. The human brain loves stories. So you're going to need anecdotes. You know, one of the oldest ways to connect with people is through stories. Christians will tell you that Jesus told stories. So here's a task. I mentioned it earlier. Create a three minute story about your journey in this industry. A three minute story. A three minute story. That's your task. Those of you that I know personally, I'm going to be checking in on you. I'm going to be checking on you. A three minute story. What's your journey? So I'll, get, I'll give you some pointers as well. What's your background? What's your background? What is the pain of your background? So again, mine, uh, my background is a school teacher. I was broke, busted, and disgusted. I was living paycheck to paycheck. Background, pain of your background. How did you, so how did you, what was the remedy to your pain? And or how did you find your platform? Who introduced you to the platform? How did you find it? How is it going for you? How is it going for you? Talk about your journey so far. And then maybe talk about why you are excited about the future. Record it and play it back to yourself. You can play it back to yourself on your headset, in the car, as you're traveling. Play it back to yourself over and over again. Become You should look forward to telling your story. You're going to get to a point where you can't wait to tell your story. Because you know it back to front. You're not nervous anymore. So if anyone calls you up to give a testimony, you're straight into your story without even thinking about it. Practice in the mirror um, with, your, with a partner, with a small audience, with toys, whatever it may be. Build it up. Build it up. So seven, always end your presentation with a call to action. If you're doing a presentation where you are presenting the company's opportunity, at the end of your presentation, they, you should now have their trust. So now that you've got their trust, there should be a call to action. There should be a call to action. They must make a decision, whether it's giving up smoking, depends on what you're, I've got different people on this presentation from all around the world, from different industries. So it's not all about networking. So if your presentation is to help someone give up smoking, maybe whatever, whatever the presentation, give up smoking, recycle more, sign up to your opportunity. They have to make a decision about something. There has to be an action. So if I'm doing a presentation about global warming, then the action is, I want you to, um, you know, think about buying an electric car. I've just made it up, but it should be an action. You want to close them. Your end of your presentation, there should be a close. Now I've got a separate training on how to close. It's a very, very good training. Okay. So guys, that's my time. I've slightly gone over. It is time to say goodbye to your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is your broke zone. Guys, we've got hundreds and hundreds of people on this Zoom right now. And I want every single one of you to take action. You didn't come on this Zoom call to play games. You came on to grow and develop. So it's time to say bye-bye to your comfort zone and seize this opportunity. I want you to organize a special private call today with your upline. So in other words, if you are, in, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are in networking and, and you're part of a platform, maybe your platform is about to launch and then you, maybe you can time this with the launch, okay? If you're on a platform already that's where the wheel's already in motion, I want you to arrange a special um, private Zoom call that you're going to host and prospect for us. It's going to be for you and your, your prospects. A special, call, a special call for your platform. 
where you're going to show the plan. You're going to show the plan, guys. You are going to show the plan. If you're scared about showing a plan, why don't you go halves with your um, upline? So they do half and you do half. If you're super, super scared, then why don't you let your upline lead it and then you give a testimony? That's the least I expect. But honestly, I think you can do it. Get hold of the presentation and just practice it. Just practice it. Do it with Buzz Lightyear. Just practice it. Practice it, practice it, practice it, and then go halves. And it's only for, it could maybe be for a very small audience. I know your heart is pumping, but you are brave. Just book it in. Remember what I said, feel the fear and do it anyway. So if I am on your platform, message me directly and say, I am feeling the fear and I'm going to do it anyway. And then we're going to game plan and organize a private call for you and your people. Fortune favors the bold and success is for the brave guys i've been desert ami i hope you've enjoyed this training um just put a 777 in the chat box if you have indeed got value of any kind from this training it has been recorded so it will um appear in the groups um guys my prayer and my hope is that from this training the next crop of presenters will be born. Honestly, guys, every marathon started with one step, <laughs> right? Everyone that's climbed a mountain, it started with one step. So it just, it just starts with that piece of action. A lot of people say, Des, how were you able to, whatever it is, you know, become a seven figure income earner, become a, you know, um, a, a worldwide speaker to do this and do that, to do that, whatever it may be. And I always say the same thing. I'm just an action man. I, I, I attended trainings like this one. I attended trainings from my company trainings. And after every single training, I always took action. I, I don't just go on training calls to feel warm and fuzzy. Some people like to go on training calls just to feel warm and fuzzy. Like, oh, I've been on a training call. I, I'm, 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 I'm bettering myself. No, not unless you take action. You've got to take some form of action. So maybe the action is this. Maybe, you know, doing a presentation was a bridge too far. Next time there is a presentation that your upline is doing, and it might even be me, I want you to message that person, whether it's me beforehand, and say, I want to give a testimony. I'm going to give a testimony. I'm going to talk about my background, pain of my background, how I came to the platform, how it's going so far, why I'm looking forward to the future. I'm going to do that. So at the very least, everyone on this call should give a testimony on the next. Who's going to be giving a testimony at the very least, at the very least on the next presentation? Put a one, one, one in the chat box. If you are going, let me see who's going to put a one in the chat box. Some of these are just coming through to me privately. Hundreds of you are still sending stuff to me, to me privately. Who's going to be giving a testimony? I'm looking closely at this list. Who is going to be giving a testimony? Okay. People's hearts are still beating. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, guys, that's me. Sorry, I went over. I'm sorry, but not sorry, because, you know, I thought it was important to, to deliver this. Um, guys, honestly, I'm so excited for the next few months. Um, you know, we've just gone through um, a, a, a transition. And honestly, if you guys knew what was about to occur, but you've got to position yourself. You've got to prepare yourself ready for this. Imagine entering the next few months, being able to present, being able to speak on stage. Imagine your life. Imagine your life without fear. Imagine how that must be free from fear. Honestly, it's absolutely amazing. Guys, that being said, I want to respect your time. Have a great rest of your evening. Thank you for all the comments, all the public comments and the private comments. I look forward to seeing you at the very top because the bottom is way too crowded. Take care and God bless. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care.